أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله أستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهديه لا فلا مدلة ومن يذلل فلا هادية وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له عز وجل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أرسى الله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يداي الساعة من يتع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يأسه ما فإن لا يدر إلى نفسه ولا يدور لها شيئا أما بعد فقال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم في سورة النح بسم الله إن إبراهيم كان أمة قانعة لله حنيفا ولم يكو من المشركين شاكرين لن أدلي أن أمه اجتباه وحداه إلى صراط المستقيم وأتيناه في الدنيا حسنا وإنه في الآخرة لا من الصالحين وصدق الله العليم بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفعاني وياكم بالذكر الحكيم إنه هو جواد رؤوف رحيم الآن حي الترجم I seek refuge in Allah from Satan from Shaitan the accursed devil in the name of Allah the merciful the compassionate all praise is due to Allah. All gratitude is due to Allah. I seek his help and beg his forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the mischief and the evils of our souls. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none who can lead that person astray. And whomsoever Allah finds in error, there is none to guide them. I bear witness that there is no God, no deity worthy of worship, except Almighty Allah, glory be to him, who is one alone and unique without partner or associate. And I bear witness further that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, is Allah's servant, messenger and apostle and he Allah has sent his messenger in truth and with the truth as a bearer of glad tidings and also as a warner Naziran, a warner in advance of the hour of judgment therefore whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger surely that person is rightly guided and whomsoever disobeys the two of them Surely that person harms only his or her own soul. And they harm not Allah the slightest little bit. As for what follows, for Allah, glory be to him, has said in the Quran, beginning at the 120th ayah or verse of surah number 16, surah to Nah, the B. Surely, Ibrahim was an ummah, an upright man, obedient to Allah, and he was not of the polytheists. He was always grateful for the favors of Allah, who chose him and guided him to the right way. We gave him a good life in this world, and in the hereafter, he will be among the righteous. And surely Allah, glory be to him, has spoken the truth.
O you who worship Allah. In less than a week now, we as Muslims throughout the world will enter into our sacred season of Dhul Hijjah. Dhul Hijjah is the month of Hajj. And in less than a week, the Hujjaj, the pilgrims for this year, will begin leaving their different stations on the earth and traveling to the house of Allah in fulfillment of their duty and their obligation. The Hajj and the Manasik of the Hajj. What are the Manasik or the Mansik? The Mansik are those rites and rituals of worship that are part and parcel of the sacred pilgrimage. And Allah, glory be to him, has said in the Quran, for every nation, Walikulli Umma Ja'alna Mansak. For every Ummah, for every nation, we prescribed a way of sacrifice so that they may pronounce the name of Allah. In the Quran and amongst the people of the Quran, the Hajj has been made an obligatory act of worship and obedience unto Allah. The Hajj is fard. It is a duty upon every Muslim who has the help to be able to perform it it is a duty that is amongst the oldest legislated acts of worship. There is no record of when the Hajj began. The Hajj did not begin with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People were making Hajj long before he was born. People have been making Hajj at least, at least since the time of Nebi Ibrahim or the Prophet Abraham And I said people have been making Hajj for at least that long because in actuality we really don't know because the center of the Hajj is the Kaaba, the house of Allah, the house of worship built at the command of Allah, the house of worship protected by Allah, the house of worship inspired by Allah, and that house that sacred house of worship was built by our earliest ancestor, a Nebi Adam, Adi Saddam, and then rebuilt on its original foundation by a Nebi Ibrahim Khalilullah Abraham, 
the beloved friend of Allah. And so, at least since the time of Abraham and the establishment of Millati Ibrahim, the Milla, the uh, uh, religion, the religious ideology of Abraham, the creed, the monotheistic creed of Abraham, salam, at least since that long, people have been engaged in travel to the house of Allah. And so I said that in just a matter of days, we will be entering this sacred season. And I say as a reminder to those of you who already know, and I say as an instruction to those of you who don't know, that the month of Dhu Hijjah, during which occurred the Eid al-Adha is our major sacred season other than Ramadan. Too many of us, in our lack of knowledge of Deen al-Islam, view Ramadan, the sacred month of Ramadan, as if it were the only sacred month or the only sacred season of the calendar year, it is not. Too many of us, in our lack of knowledge of Deen al Islam, uh, uh, look at the Idul Fit as if the Idul Fit, which occurs at the end of the month of Ramadan, is our number one high holy day, and Id, it is not the high holy day of the Muslim, the Id Kabir, as it is called. The great Id is the Id al-Adha. The high Id, even higher than Id al-Fitr, and you know how high Id al-Fitr is, even higher and more uh, critically significant to our deen is the Ido Adha. And just as Ido Fitr is tied to fasting during the month of Ramadan, know that Ido Adha is tied to the sacred pilgrimage to the house of Allah during the month of Zuhidja. O you who worship Allah. So I remind you and myself of this, not only because we should be mindful that there are brothers and sisters who are completing their preparations even now to get ready to leave, to go to Hajj, those that have not done so uh, already. Some people, you know, when we review the five pillars of Islam and we see there the five pillars of Islam are obligatory for every Muslim once in his life if he or she is able or if he or she uh, has the capacity. Too many of us think that that means, oh well, if, 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 I'm able to put a little money on the side to make the Hajj, uh, then uh, alhamdulillah, I'll, I'll, I'll make it. And, and, but in the meantime, we're wearing $200 sneakers and every uh, latest piece of technology that comes out, we've got it. And, 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 and every uh, new film that comes out every week, we're there in the uh, AMC or wherever else giving our money away. 
then after we get through spending all that money, frivolously, we think, well, if I have something left over, <laughs> then I'll go on high. No, it doesn't mean that. Because there are Muslims in parts of the world where they don't have AMC, where they don't have Lois, where they don't wear $200 uh, 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 sneakers, and where they can't afford, they can't afford to take, you know, first class flights to Mecca. There are Muslims in parts of the world where the only way they can get to Mecca is to start a year early walking or start a year early on horseback or camelback while other people are flying in jet. We need to know this. So those brothers and sisters, some of them who calculate that they might even die on the Hajj and they go to Hajj to die but die with a smile on their faces, knowing that they have fulfilled their obligation to Allah. Those of you who have fulfilled that obligation, you are my witness that on the Hajj, that every time there's a Salah, there's a Salat to Janazah. Salat to Janazah at every prayer, because people are constantly dying. But they're not sad, and the people who are burying them are not sad. Because their concept is, I have exerted myself to the fullest in obedience to Allah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. So this sacred season is to be taken seriously. Inshallah, as we get closer to that date, we want to you know, go deeper and deeper into it, but you should know at least that the sacred season, the sacred month of uh, Zohedja is a month of fasting. It is a month of fasting according to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him at least one day and no more than nine days before the eight. This is our faith. This is the deen, the religious way of life that is called Al-Islam. If you're able, if your health allows, and so forth and so on, the first nine days of the month of Zuhijjah are set aside for worship for the Muslim. Uh, um, uh, uh, fasting, as well fasting as well as reciting the remembrance of Allah with our tongue with our tongue that's what characterize as well as increase increasing uh, good works righteous behavior this is the way that we're we're supposed to spend the first nine days of the month of Zohedjah, even as we strive to do those things during the month of Ramadan. And think for a moment about the blessing and the mercy of Allah. Think for a moment how Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, may the peace and blessing, please, so whoever's got that emergency Code. I'm trying to address an emergency here. Turn them things off. Turn them phones off. You have to turn it off because it's going to go. It's an emergency code. But during the first nine days of Ramadan, uh, excuse me, first nine days of Zuhijjah, those are sacred days in which our behavior and our focus is like the behavior and the focus during the month of Ramadan. Some people say now, even as they say during Ramadan, well, um, my health won't allow me to fast like that. 
or, you know, I have to take my medication, I have to do this, I have to do that, fine. But Allah is so great, so magnanimous that he has given us means for compensating for that condition. And it's as simple, as simple as feeding someone, someone hungry, someone in need, in lieu of being able to fast that day. So there's no reason, no excuse, why we should not be on our best behavior. And even if you're not healthy, completely healthy enough to fast, man, you should, as you move through the city of New York, a city that's full of hungry people, a city that's full of homeless people, you should have a smile on your face and be thanking Allah that he has given you, given us the opportunity to partake of the blessing. Somebody walk up to you, as people often do, you know, uh, excuse me, brother, can you, you know, back in the day they used to say, can, can you spare a dime? Now they say, can you spare a dollar? Five dollars, you know, they, they ask you. And your reply should be, are you hungry? Uh, yeah, cause, yeah, come on, come on, come, come on, right with me. Walk them in a place, tell the people behind the counter, I'm paying for this, well, order what you want. And then walk out the door with a smile on your face. Because this is a sacred time of year. And the mercy of Allah is such, that at the end of Ramadan, the Prophet والسلام, told us that if we were to follow fasting during the month of Ramadan uh, with fasting six days during the month of Shawwal, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, said, and you know this, you know this, he said, it'd be just as if you fasted for the entire rest of the year. And some of us did that. We know that. So we were fasting during Shawwal or we were feeding people during Shawwal. But now here we are. The year is not even up. And we're given another opportunity to add faith to faith. Iman on ma'imana. Faith to faith. Good deed to good deed. Blessing to blessing by fasting at least the ninth day of Zuhijjah, but and at a maximum the first nine days of Zuhijjah, and our behavior should mirror or reflect the behavior of the people of Hajj, O you who worship Allah. The mansik of Hajj, the rites and rituals of Hajj are meant to remind us of the beloved friend of Allah, a Nebi Ibrahim the, the different prophets have what we call in Arabic uh, kunya, you know, nickname, characteristic name. A kunya in the uh, best form of the tradition, a kunya is a nickname connoting uh, a, a, a characteristic of personality or character of spirit. You know, that's in the highest tradition. I'm not talking about, you know, kunya is about the size of people's head and all that. Cause you're, you're, you're called jughead, man. I'm not talking about that as a kunya. Prophets don't have those kind of names. Prophets have names that help define the essence of their being. And so, um, a Nebi Ibrahim, Abraham, uh, Abraham his kunya in Islam is Khalilullah. The Khalil of Allah, the beloved friend of Allah. And we find, as we heard before, in Surah number 16, 
that Allah, glory be to him, describes his beloved friend. And, and know, when Allah describes you for the good or the bad, you have been described indeed. And all of us should hope and work that if there's any description in the Quran that pertains to us, that it's a good one. That it's a good one. So Allah says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifan. Oh, subhanallah. This is a phrase that begins with the word inna. It's in, in Arabic grammar that's called uh, an, in, an intensive. It means surely, most definitely, without a doubt, Allah says, Abraham was an ummah. Now, usually when we hear the word ummah, as Muslims, we're thinking of a community. We're thinking of a nation. We're thinking of a group. But Allah calls Ibrahim, alayhi salam, an ummah. And the Mufassirun, the scholarly commentators of the Quran, they say that the reason why Allah, there are two reasons why Allah calls Abraham and Ummah, the first one being that from his loin came two nations of people through his two sons, both of whom were prophets. Wow, well, talk about a foundation. Here's Abraham, the prophet, he uh, gives birth, he fathers, and his two wives give birth respectively to two uh, boys who grow up to be prophets. A Nebi Ismail or Ishmael and a Nebi Ishaq or Isaiah. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon them both. Uh, Ismail alayhi salam being the ancestor of the Arabs and uh, Ishaq alayhi salam being the ancestors of the Bani Israel, of the original Jew, O you who worship Allah. So the scholars of the Quran say that when Allah says Abraham was a nation, he was referring to that. But also the word uh, Ummah, it means or can mean a motto an example, an exemplary leader. It, it, it means all of that. You're not going to, uh, Arabic is a prolific language, profound language. You're not going to have an Arabic word with just one meaning. That doesn't happen. And so Allah says, most definitely Abraham was an ummah, an upright man. He calls him Qanita uh, Lillahi Hanifan upright and obedient to Allah. This is how Allah describes Abraham and says he was not of the polytheists. He was always grateful for the favors of Allah who chose him and guided him to the right way. We gave him, Allah says, innahu, uh, uh, I'm sorry, wa ataynahu fi dunya hasana. And we gave him a good life in this world. And in the hereafter, he will be of the salihin. He will be of those who are salih, who are upright, who are uh, 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 righteous in the Akira. And so we should know, and I mention this, because the Hijjah, is the month in which our acts of obedience during the Hajj are taken directly from the prophetic example of Abraham salam, and members of his family. Abraham and members of his family. And so I remind you of this, dear brothers and sisters. 
and I try to make it a habit to always remind us of those times of the year that are markers when we should psychologically adjust our attitude to make sure that we are living our lives in sync, you know that word, in sync with the commands of Allah. Because as I said, uh, I guess it was a week or two ago, Allah, glory be to him, has given us a spiritual GPS, a spiritual guidance system, so that when we're traveling through the life of this world, going down, you know, the highways and byways of the life of this world, looking here, looking there, being distracted by this and being distracted by that and taking wrong turns and getting lost and all of that kind of thing. Allah has built into the religious lifestyle of Islam markers that talk to us, that talk to us and give us direction of where we need to be going. Just, just like the voice on that, on that GPS. And if you take a wrong turn, the GPS will tell you, well, uh, make an adjustment, tell you make an adjustment, make a turn here, yeah, make a U-turn. This is life. Sometimes we're going through life, and we look and we say, how in the world did I get here? And the guidance of Allah tells you, there ain't no problem. You're still alive. I'm still giving you opportunities make a U-turn and go back and get yourself on the right path. So as we move through the dunya, as we move through the life of this world, if we depend only on the markers of society, we're going to be lost, man, spiritually, as, as Muslims. Uh, you know, uh, you'll be celebrating freedom you don't have. <laughs> So somebody else's freedom. I mean, if you're following those markers, following myths, following lies, worshiping false gods, those are the markers built into the holiday. Holiday means holy day. Look it up in the dictionary. Holiday means holy day. Well, if you're only going by the holidays of this life, you're going to be lost as a Muslim. But if we keep track of our own calendar, we keep track of those days that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and those months that Allah glorified and exalted be He has pointed to, then even if you're going off, you find yourself, oh, wait a minute, you'll hear the call of the calendar. And the call of the calendar will say, oh, it's Ninth month is Ramadan, time for you to be doing this. Oh, it's the month of Dhu Hijjah, time for you to be doing that. Oh, after uh, uh, Dhu Hijjah, it's the month of Muharram, time to be doing this, that, and the other. That's why I remind us. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us mindful of this sacred time of the year that approaches. Adjust your mind, adjust your thinking, adjust your attitude, adjust your worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may lift us up in faith by stages and degrees. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Oh, 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم بارك وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد عليه السلام والسلام وعلى آله وأصحابه وأنصاره أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وبعد فقال الله تعالى في السورة الحج وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاده هو اجتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة أبيكم إبراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل وفي هذا ليكون الرسول شهيدا عليكم وتكون شهداء على الناس فأقيموا الصلاة وعدوا الزكاة واعتصموا بالله هو مولاكم فنئم المولى ونئم النصير وصدق الله عليه اللهم اغفرنا مسلمين ومسلمات ومؤمنين ومؤمنات ومحسنين ومحسنات وبعد For uh, Allah glory be to him has said uh, in the last ayah or last couple of verses of Surah Al-Hajj, the Surah named after the Hajj, Allah says, strive in the way of Allah, struggle in the way of Allah as you ought to strive or struggle with sincerity and discipline. He has chosen you. Allah has chosen you and has not laid upon you any hardship in the observance of your faith. The faith of your father Ibrahim. He named you Muslims before in prior scripture and in this, meaning in this Quran, so that the messenger may testify against you and you yourselves may testify against the rest of mankind. Therefore, establish the salah, pay the zakah, and hold fast to Allah, who is your protector, with an excellent protector and a splendid supporter. O you who worship Allah. In the Quran, Allah speaks in many different verses about the Prophet Abraham. And we just heard that Allah said that uh, he gave Abraham hasana uh, fi dunya, good in, the, in this world, in this life. None of us should misunderstand that that means that Abraham did not have to struggle because he did. We should not think that Abraham didn't have moments of difficulty, moments when he was tried and tested, moments when his faith was tested, moments when he was tested because of his faith, because his life, his prophetic uh, mission was full of moments like that. Uh, a little over a year ago, year and a half ago, year and some odd months ago, I was in uh, the country of Turkey, went to Turkey. And one Juma, um, myself and the brothers and sisters I was with, we went to Juma at a masjid that was called Masjid Khalil, Khalil. Some people call it Masjid Khalil. Some people, other people call it Masjid Khalilullah. 
So after Juma, I walked up to a wall. There was a plaque in the wall. And I'm looking around. I said, man, this is, a, this is an old mosque here. I, I think they had an even greater outside space than they did inside space of the mosque. And the plaque in the wall, which was in Arabic and Turkish and English and something else, the plaque in the wall said, on this location, it said, Allah rescued the prophet Abraham from the fire erected by his enemy. And then it began to give the history how, how uh, before it was a mosque, when uh, Turkey was in control, uh, was being controlled by Christians, that it was a church. And before that, it was something else. But when I looked at it, every marker in the history of that spot was tied to Prophet Abraham, alayhi salam, to a Nebi Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And all of us, I don't think I'll talk about it today, but also about uh, uh, the uh, event that precipitated the building of that house of worship. I remember Mu'allimi Sheikh Alama Tawfiq Rahmatullahi One day he was explaining to those of us who were his students the uh, traditions of the ancient world. And he said to us that in the ancient world, when people would have sacred experiences, sacred encounters, that they would mark the location of that sacred encounter by building a stone monument on that location. That's why when you go through the earth, you see pyramids, you see this, you see that. Sacred, and the Kaaba itself was built in a sacred location. At a location that's still held sacred by those of us who are Muslim. So, so sacred. So sacred that if you're on a highway driving toward Mecca, when you get right outside of Mecca, there's a sign, big high, you know how you have these green and white signs? And it says, in essence, those of you who are capable of respecting the sanctity, this way. And the arrow points to the right. And those of you who are not capable of that, because your belief system doesn't support it, teach you, keep on going. <laughs> it's right there on the highway. I'm riding in a vehicle. I looked at the sign. All I can do is laugh. Man. But people are serious about preserving the sacredness of different locations because it preserves the memory of what occurred there. And Abraham, alayhi salam, born and raised in a polytheistic society. Abraham, born and raised in a family, a community, and a society that was rooted in values linked to the worship of many gods. Abraham, Ibrahim, a Nebi Ibrahim, alayhi salam, was courageous enough to stand up in the middle of all of that, live in a way that was obedient to Almighty God, but that went against the grain of the society, preached against the grain of the society, and acted against the grain of the society. And as a result of that, as we would say in the vernacular, caught a lot of hell. Caught a lot of hell. You know, people think he was always on the move, just giving dawah. Yeah, he was giving dawah, but he needed to stay on the move, too. Because people are not receptive to truth. 
that after one major confrontation, they said, man, that's enough of this, man. Get rid of this guy. And they built a prison of wood, locked him in it, and set it on fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you read the Quran, Allah says, Abraham maintained his composure and said to the fire and the flames of the fire, be cool. And Allah extinguished the fire and delivered him from the situation that he was in. And this this where I want this where I want to wrap up. Because you see, we who are Muslims in this day, in this time, in this place, sincerely trying to live the Milla of a Nebi Ibrahim, alayhi salam as manifested in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we're catching hell now too. And the more you practice and the more you preach and the more you act and live, you're going to find yourself confronted by people who want to build a prison for you and I and set it on fire. People that want to... uh, uh, compromise our individual faith, it, you know, make it hard for us to then say, well, you know, you wouldn't have such a difficult time if you just take that little hat off your head, take that, take that scarf off your head, sister, and all of that kind of stuff. They'll have you practicing a religion that you'll never be able to identify. See, those of you who haven't been in this country for four or five hundred years, you don't know the kind of pressure that Muslims used to be under. You know about today's pressure. You don't know anything about Muslims having Juma on Sunday because they were afraid to, you know, confront the people about the need. Yo, man, I, I got to get off the job here, man. We worship on Friday. So right here in New York, they used to, in certain mosques, they used to have Juma on Sunday. You don't know about the lawsuits that Muslims are engaged in fighting in the courts for the right to wear a beard on the job, fighting in the courts for the right to dress the way they wanted to dress as Muslims instead of being compelled uh, in a non-uniform position to dress a certain way, but if you go and look at the record, it's right there. And now we are, we're here in New York City, you got everybody coming behind our example. Everybody got beard, Jews, you know, everybody. Everybody, you, you want to wear a kufi? Yeah, I mean, you got Sikhs with turbans on. And everything, you know, police officer, he's a Sikh, he got the turban on and all. That doesn't just happen because of the good graces of Uncle Sam. Or because this is America, land of the free, home of the brave. Uh, you know, extinguisher of the Native American. Chapter of the slave. No, this happens because the people who are Muslim here before you got here, fought these people. I don't mean physically, though there was a period of time when we were doing that too. And see, I have to relate this history because uh, you might not know it otherwise. And so when people start attacking imams, you don't know how unheard of that is in, in this city. Jumping on Muslims if they if they come from the mosque, man, you gotta be kidding, man. <laughs> you really you really don't know this history of why there's such respect in the street for a Muslim men and women. But it's because of fires that were set for us. And because of our faith, Allah says, do they think upon saying, I believe, 
that they will not be tested, we shall surely test you as we tested those who came before you. This is the promise of Allah. And it has happened and it is happening now. So be strong of faith. Be strong of faith. Don't be disheartened by the trials and the difficulties and the prisons of fire that have been set. What it does is it affirms for us that we're on the right path. <laughs> All of this opposition, the lies, people threatening to keep you out of America or run you out of America because you're Muslim, man, later for that and later for them. And if we stand up and stand together as we have done, you will see how weak they are. They lie against the Quran and lie against the Prophet because they are weak and because they know of the strength of Islam and the strength of this way of life. And the only thing that they can do is try to convince the Muslims to abandon this way of life and therefore to make it weak. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we approach the month of Zuhijjah to give us the strength of faith to strive in Allah's cause as we ought to strive. We recognize that we are Muslim because Allah has chosen us to be Muslim. You didn't choose Allah, Allah chose you. Uh, your Islam is not a favor to Allah. Your Islam is Allah's favor to you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us mindful of the continuity of the prophetic mission from Abraham alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We ask Allah to make us of those who by our very presence in the society serve as an example of what should be done and what should not be done in gaining the favor or the displeasure of Allah. And remember Allah's command, establish the Salah, not just on Friday, not just on coming to the mosque on Friday, establish the Salah every day. Uh, there have never been as many mosques in New York City as there are now. You can't go to a part of New York City and find a masjid or a musalla, you know, a place for, for making this. All, uh, in, they are in hospitals. They are in the airport. They are everywhere. There's the, you don't even have to do like we used to have to do it back in the day. Carry your prayer rug around under your arm. And when it was time, time, time for salah, go, 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 out, go in the building, go up on the roof going to land in, in, the, in the office building, you work in the office building, and people wondering why every lunch hour you disappear, and every now and then somebody find you, you know, in the stairway praying. You don't even have to go through them changes anymore. <laughs> because Allah has strengthened the growth of this way of life. So establish the Salah, pay the Zakah, pay the Zakah, pay the Zakah, meaning give Sadaqah and pay your zakah. These are just as much. Salah and zakah are just as much a part of Islam, are just as obligatory as fasting and hajj. When you put them all together with the declaration of the oneness of Allah and his uh, Prophet Muhammad as his messenger, then you get Islam. Buni al Islam ala Kamsan. The Prophet said, Islam is built on five things. And remember that Allah is our protector. About a week ago, a number of African American Imams were in a meeting of Imams of other ethnicities here in the city. This is after the Imam was murdered. Rahmatullah alayhi. 
And some of them, they went in there talking about, oh, we're afraid and we have to have the police doing this and that. African-American imams got fed up and said, man, y'all need to man up and cut this stuff out. Man. Uh, in our, in the Islamic tradition that we follow, we fear none but Allah. And we're not afraid of somebody running up. We'd be afraid for them. I mean, that's how, you know, and they weren't bragging. They, they were just, you know, telling it like it is. This is not the time to be afraid. This is the time to be courageous and to look around and see the, uh, 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 the affirmation of the power of this way of life and know that Allah is our protector and surely Allah is the best to protect. So we ask him for his continued grace and his continued favor. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Amin. وَأَوْقَى إِكَامَةً